Hi, my name is Anthony Silva, and I worked with my mentor, Dr. Brent Vernon, on my applied project, which was the creation of iodinated thermoresponsive nipan based copolymers for endovascular aneurysm repair. So talking a little bit more about the motivation behind uh, my research. So intracranial aneurysms currently pose a pretty critical pitfall in modern medical care. If an aneurysm does rupture, the mortality rate of that event is about 50%. Even if it doesn't cause death, it can cause what is called permanent neurological deficits in about 66% of its survivors. The current standard treatment for intracranial aneurysms is either surgical clipping or the use of endovascular embolic coils. Both of these methods rely on blocking circulation into the aneurysmal space uh, to prevent rupture from actually occurring. So these forms of treatment do have their downsides. Surgical clipping requires a craniotomy, which is an extremely invasive surgical procedure. And recent studies have shown that embolic coils suffer from relatively high rates of recanalization and incomplete occlusion. So certain thermoresponsive polymers have shown promise as an effective treatment for embolizing aneurysms. These polymers have shown to be effective uh, in occluding an aneurysm. Also, they have lower risk of migration and recanalization. And the procedure implanta of implantation is pretty minimally invasive. However, not everything is perfect. The implantation of these polymers has run into issues relating the, to the visualization of the polymer itself. Uh, this report focuses on establishing a method to create an iodinated form of a NIPAM-based copolymer to make it an ideal candidate for use in aneurysms and other vascular malformations that may come up. So talking a little bit more on our approach, uh, the polymer that we made is PNJHAC or polynipam cojefamine cohemoacrylate. So the base of that polymer is NIPAM, which is a temperature responsive polymer that has gained a lot of interest from the biomedical community. The reason for this is two things. One, it's water soluble, which is great. Two, it's lower critical solution temperature or LCST sits right below human body temperature. So this means that when polynipam is introduced into the body, the polymer becomes insoluble and its chains form a folded conformation and it physically gels. So that can be seen in the figure to the right from A to B. That's it physically gelling. Um, so that sounds good, but there are two main issues with polynipam. So one, uh, physical gels undergo this thing called creep. So what happens is that when a polymer is under constant low frequency stress, it'll actually migrate away from its implantation site which is bad, we don't want to cause any downstream uh, issues in the future. And then on top of that, uh, polynipam shrinks actually when it physically gelates, which is bad for permanently occluding aneurysms, of course. So we fix these issues by one, including jefamine and HEMA, which will mitigate the effect of the NIPAM monomers pulling each other together and shrinking. And then two, we chemically cross-link via Michael-type addition um, between thiols in QT and acrylate groups in our polymer. So that's all the background on the polymer itself, but we still have the issue with the visualization. So originally we had attempted to use a radio-opaque water-based solvent to visualize the placement of these polymers, but that, that solvent would quickly wash away during our implantation process. So my applied project was focused on establishing a process of iodinating the polymer itself and testing the effects on the properties of those copolymers. Characterization methods were seen in the results. One was the results of the fluoroscopy study and one was the results of the rheometry study. For the fluoroscopy study, we successfully synthesized two polymers. One was made with idobenzyl chloride and the other was made with triadolphenol. Once those two polymers were made, we took those to BNI and imaged them under a C-arm so that we could directly visualize whether or not those polymers had been iodinated enough. The next was the rheometry study, which we used to test to see if the iodination had affected any of the physical properties of the polymer itself. Uh, we would add a sample to a rheometer where it would then gelate and be exposed to strain to gather information on its storage and loss modulus. So that concludes a little teaser of my project. Please stop by if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you.